One, I want to let Bud respond to uh, the back and forth about the explosions, and also we have another caller waiting. I want to ask you, though, before uh, we go back to Bud, uh, you've, you said that you disagree with his assessment. I want to ask you where you get your information from, or if you could say a little bit about your background, how you, you, how you came to that knowledge, and then we'll have just so that those of us who are listeners engaging where you're each coming from have some idea of where you're getting your information. <coughs> I, uh, I have a master's degree uh, in geological sciences from Harvard University, and uh, I have also um, worked as a, uh, uh, as a, fire, uh, as a fireman uh, with the Colorado River Fire Crew of the United States uh, Forest Service. So I'm quite familiar with, uh, um, with the scientific principles involved, and I'm quite familiar with the uh, practical applications of fire suppression. Okay. Uh, I've received extensive training. One thing that I would like to point out before, before, we, uh, before we stop this is that I, have done a, I did a calculation that was uh, confirmed by Professor Francois Amar, the uh, uh, chairperson of the Department of Chemistry at the University of Maine at Orono, uh, to see what the energy content of the full tank would be. It comes to just a little over half a megaton which is about 33 times, at least 33 times, the amount of energy released by the, the atomic bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. This thing could burn up the entire mid-coast, and there are not adequate safeguards. All right, Bud, quickly, do you want to respond to, I, I want to get just specifically to that one piece that you two are dispute and dispute on before we move to the next caller, because I think it's an important thing to not just skip over. Do you uh, have, do you want to, respond to that? I, I guess the best response I can make, uh, other than saying that I've been in the fire business since 1968, uh, is that what I said before is that two months ago, over at a fire at the Colonial Gables Motel, I put out a propane fire by accident with water. Okay. We're going to go ahead and move on to our next caller. Go ahead and thank you for your call, David. Go ahead, caller, uh, first name, and uh, what's your comment or question? Uh, this is Fred, and I'm calling from St. George. Hi, Fred. Um, I'm just wondering how close this tank will be to other tanks. And, again, I would like to hear the diameter and the height of this tank. Okay. I'm going to – Peter Tabor hasn't said anything for a while, so I'll let him feel that. I think he knows the answer. And also maybe we could work into that, uh, the proximity to the GAC chemical uh, company, okay. which has some unknown chemicals and several knowns that are can potentially quite dangerous. This, this tank is not in isolation, and unlike the – there's three or four or five of them across, around the country. This may be the largest. Certainly it is the largest – would be on the East Coast. Uh, but these tanks are usually in t real industrial zones. They're usually on waterfronts where by m big municipalities that have, have uh, uh, things like, f like f um, fireboats. Portland, for instance, uh, is, is pr is, has got some preparation at its tank farm down in, in South and adjoining at South Portland. There's two fireboats. And they can put on out something like those fireboats can put out something like seven times what's available at uh, just one of those boats uh, in terms of a st stream of uh, just for cooling purposes um, th than than what's uh, available right now at Mac Point and Searsport. My point is that this this tank uh, is is been shoehorned into a very small area and. It sits within a mile. It's, I, sh I should say, just in human terms, it sits within, within literally hundreds of yards of... of 600 feet of residence. Right, of residences and commercial properties. Uh, and uh, it doesn't, it's not that much farther. It's uh, under a mile from the largest chemical factory in the state. And it is also next to two th tank farms which have a have a uh, something on the order of 50 to 60 million gallons capacity um, uh, of of such uh, materials as gasoline, ethanol. Uh, great, there's 11 million gallons of 
ethanol, which, which has the uh, nasty as aspect about it that when it burns, you can't see it. Uh, we have chlorine tank cars down there and uh, caustic soda cars, we, all kinds of chemicals, all close together. It's a, it's a disaster. Uh, this is a port that was designed to, to, as a coaling station in 1906, and more and more things are being added to it. And this is, just, as I've said before, way out of scale. Okay, I have two callers waiting, but Astrid wants to respond to that Just quickly, well. that in Tampa there's a tank that's basically this size. It has a 2.2-mile radius where nothing else exists. Within 2.2 miles of the tank they want to put in, we have all our parks, all our schools, our downtown, and more residents than we could count off the map. And my understanding is that a uh, facility in Tampa also has a security gate that's a mile away from the facility itself? Right, as opposed to being right on Route 1. Uh, go ahead, caller. Uh, first name and uh, what's your question or comment, please? Caller? Oh, is this me? Yes, it's you. Oh, sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Barry Lambert. I, um, I bought a house in Searsport and uh, pay taxes there. And, um, yeah, I'm really concerned about the tank and, you know, kind of the way this whole thing's kind of been railroaded through there. It seems as though, to me, that this is not just a Searsport issue, but, uh, you know, there's been calls in from New Northport, Belfast, people coming to the, to the meetings and stuff like that. And this is going to impact all of Mid-Coast Maine. Um, you know, we've been told that, you know, I, I just kind of think that trying to throw water on a, on a, on a, on a propane fire um, at a at a motel is, is is a heck of a difference between a 23 million gallon issue that could possibly come come out of here. There's nothing that could put this thing out. If we ever had a terrorist um, attack over there, it would be it would be beyond the scale of of 9/11 um, by 50 times, I think. And you know, th so there's a lot of people that are concerned. There's a lot, you know, as far as like uh, danger. You know, proximity to people living, um, you know, tourism impact, and nobody even gets to vote on this thing. I think it should be a, a Penobscot Bay area vote. Um, we haven't been really consulted about this thing, and, and we're, we're told that there's no real safety issues. Well, I was just kind of wondering, I'd like to ask this guy if he's aware that BCP just paid a $61 million um, suit against it for um, air quality issues that it had in, in New Mexico. Um, you know, and, and so we're even told that nothing can possibly happen. Nothing can possibly happen. This thing is right beside who won. Somebody could pull over to the side of the road and, and, and some crazy guy could just, you know, decide, okay, I'm going to try to take this thing out. And, and no real answers have been, had been um, you know, given for this stuff. Um, you know, the lady just talked about a two-mile two perimeter. Um, you know, there's no two-mile perimeter there. And the way this thing's getting pushed through is just, it's, absurd and nobody's getting really um, uh, you know the townspeople can't even vote on the thing here's part let alone the people in Stockton Springs who would be dead if this thing blows and Belfast everywhere um, all that chlorine could blow up and drift all over the state and impact people's um, breathing <clears throat> and and I just don't think anybody there's never been any real you know uh, well I would like to say that the EPA person that put their, their rubber stamp on this is an ex um, oil lobbyist um, and, and so, to me, that's a conflict of interest. This, this thing needs to be slowed down. This need to, thing needs to be studied. Hopefully, this referendum gets passed so that the people can 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 uh, have a say in this thing, and it can be an impartial thing, not pushed by oil interests. Okay, thank you.